Hello, I'm eating a hot dog with a knife and fork, and that's pretty weird. But it's not as weird as the hot dog related Linux that we're gonna look at today. It's called Hot Dog Linux, and it's an absolute fever dream of vintage computer interfaces, and today we're gonna explore it. So buckle up, compile your finest bottle of ketchup, and stay tuned. And if you enjoy vintage computers and uh, daily driving joke Linux distributions, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We do a lot of these kinds of shenanigans around here, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So Hot Dog Linux is the brainchild of Arthur Chong, and it's not a Linux distro per se. Instead, it's a bunch of hilarious and mostly fully functional interfaces haphazardly hacked on top of Slackware Linux 15. Now, don't get me wrong, haphazard isn't a criticism. In fact, with Hot Dog, it's a deliberate design choice. Hot Dog is an acronym for horrible, obsolete typeface and dreadful on-screen graphics. And while you may think that's a total coincidence that this actually spells out Hot Dog, I'm more than a little suspicious that the name has something to do with the famously eye-scorching Windows 3X theme called Hot Dog which is the default interface in a full Hot Dog Linux install. Hot Dog is comprised of several different homages to classic computer GUIs running as a Linux window manager. And honestly, they're quite convincing. There's Mac OS X Aqua, Amiga, Windows 3X Hot Dog Stand, of course, Atari ST Gem, Mac Classic, Mac Color, and Mac Platinum. Kudos for all the classic Mac stuff. I dare say that Mr. Chong might just be one of us. And today, we're gonna take a look at each of these. Oh, and Hot Dog is nothing if not professional. There is, of course, a well-documented GitHub, as well as illustrated install instructions on hotdoglinux.com. Complete with wonderful nuggets like, step three, swap space. I do not use swap space, as I prefer to run out of memory. Now that's a vibe that I can get behind. So there are three ways to get started using Hot Dog Linux. The easiest is with the provided live ISO images. Just flash them to a USB drive or a DVD and boot right up into your hot doggy bliss. There's one for 64-bit and there's even one for 32-bit which boots into a very responsive Slackware 15 image even on really old machines like my ThinkPad X60S. This thing is a dual core Centrino from 2007. And the live images make it really easy to install right to the hard drive using a retro computerified version of Slackware's installer. But those images only contain a few of the retro desktops. So to get the full experience, we're going with the second option. I've installed a full Slackware 15 on this beautiful ThinkPad X230 and compiled all of Hot Dog Linux's purposefully janky Perl scripts right from the GitHub. The third option is to use the deb installer for Ubuntu systems, but according to the readme, it doesn't work very well, and I did have some trouble getting it to work on my own Ubuntu machine. You know what isn't any bit wonky? The sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay has long been famous for their fast and easy PCB prototyping services. But today, they're truly a one-stop solution for PCB assembly as well. With SMT and through-hole assembly, wave soldering for PCBA, and functional testing, and right now, they have an assembly service promotion, only $30 total for 1 to 20 pieces assembled. It's really easy to get started with a quote, and PCBWay offers a turnkey option with parts from their own supply. So check out PCBWay.com today and start a quote. It'll really help out the channel. Link in the description below. Okay, so ignore this wart coming out of the side of the ThinkPad. I was trying to get some video capture going, although <laughs> it's being a little picky here, but I think I have it. So this is an install of Slackware 15, 64-bit here on this quad-core ThinkPad. And I've already gone ahead and uh, installed Hot Dog Linux, which I have just copied from the Git repository. So in order to actually boot into Hot Dog Linux, 
we have to change the window manager with xwm config to xterm. I had it on xfce, of course, because that's what I'm running. But we'll change it to xterm. And then uh, we'll get out of here and log out back into the command line here. And now I can do start x, which is going to look quite weird because it's just going to give me bash here a shell in the corner. And boy, oh boy, my video capture does not like that. Okay, so janky screen capture wasn't really working with Hot Dog, so I've installed Slackware 15 off VirtualBox and configured it exactly the same as I have it on the ThinkPad. So let's explore Hot Dog Linux. So I already have it installed here. We're just gonna have to go into XWM config so we can switch out of XFCE's window manager and into Xterm. And then we're gonna log out. And now when I start X again, and then do CD hot dog and hot dog run window manager. Ha <laughs> ha, hot dog Linux. <laughs> okay, so let me just use a terminal to set the resolution with X, R and R. So we'll do X, R and R dash S. Now resolution is interesting here because with Hot Dog Linux, the smaller the resolution, the better. So let's say 1440, whoops. So let's say 1440 by 900. And we can scale this back down as and if needed. So you might have noticed on the Hot Dog Linux install guide, the screenshots have icons here, but uh, yeah, on our desktop right now, there are none. We can actually fix that and it's kind of interesting. So let me show you. I originally couldn't figure out how to get icons on the desktop, so I filed an issue here. And yeah, the author got back to me immediately saying that he just commented out those icons while he was working on something and he put them back in just for us. So yeah, check it out. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to re-enable these icons if you are cloning the repository here today. Okay, back in XFCE here. And uh, yeah, there is a folder called desktop icons inside this folder. <laughs> well, all the icons are a bunch of text files. If you open them up, you can see, yeah, it's, it's just text files. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to show these on the desktop, they have to be in a folder called desktop. Now, the GUI doesn't really distinguish between what icons go to what operating system. So we kind of would have to just take whatever icons we want from the desktop icons folder and move those into the desktop folder for whichever version of Hot Dog Linux we want to get a nice screenshot or a nice a nice real feel from. So for example, if I want to do Atari stuff, well then I would just move these Atari files into Hot Dog's desktop folder. And <laughs> look at that, our Atari icons right here on the desktop. So let me just change the resolution here so we can reach the entire menu. Let's enter Atari ST mode and yeah, look at that. That really uh, completes the look, even though these icons, they don't actually do anything, except you can drag them around, but they really complete the look. Let's get out of this resolution. This is a little little bit too much for an Atari ST. XR and R dash S 640 by 480. <laughs> yeah. Now that is what an Atari should look like. Maybe a little, little bigger, a little bigger. 800 by 
600. Yeah, I mean, this, this even looks good at 1024 by 768. And the other reason I like the Atari desktop here is because you can actually see the entire menu. Whereas in some of these other ones, yeah, you can't really get to everything in the menu here. But we can fix that as well. Let me show you. Let's move this stuff out of desktop. So we have a clean slate of icons. And let's do a little configuration of the menu, which is pretty easy because all the configuration is CSV files <laughs> that we can open up in a spreadsheet. So I think root menu, yeah, root window menu.csv. Let's open that up in LibreOffice. Yeah, look at that. How easy is that? I think all operating systems should have their configuration done through a whole bunch of spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's take out some of this stuff that we don't really need. So screenshots we can take out. And that way maybe we can see the rest of these menu items a little bit better. So we'll just save that. Keep it as a CSV. And I think I want to focus on the Mac stuff. So. Let's move some Mac icons into the desktop folder here. So Mac Platinum Trash Can. Yep. Why not? Some of these Mac color folders will add to the ambiance. What else is in here? Mac Color Document and Computer, sure. And then my favorite one, rug.txt, <laughs> yeah. which something I was really happy to discover is there are a ton of Big Lebowski references all over the place. And actually, I didn't notice this before, but you can actually do stuff in the icon text files themselves. I don't know if this works or not, but I'm guessing if you double click this icon, it's going to show an alert. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. I accidentally did two trash cans. Okay, so the alert, it doesn't show the alert, but it goes into the kind of running tally of what's happening here in X term. Let's change this resolution here. Yeah, I don't know how I got two trash cans, but whatever. I can't go any lower than this for some reason. <laughs> okay, well, let's go into another theme here. Let's, let's take a look at all the different themes. So here is the Amiga theme. And yeah, it certainly looks funny with all these icons that don't match, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here. If you go into Amiga drives, Look at that. And these things actually work. <laughs> How cool is that? I can browse my Unix file system here. I don't have any videos. But yeah, that really looks convincing. Yeah, okay, let's go into Mac Classic mode. <laughs> we still have all of our Amiga windows open. Let's uh, close all that stuff. Yeah, I think we need a different resolution here. All right, 800 by 600. Yeah, that seems to work much better for our <laughs> classic Mac here. Yeah, this is a pretty convincing classic Mac. <laughs> Actually, if this was my computer, these icons would be just kind of slightly out of, slightly out of sync. We have Mac color mode, which is much the same, but uh, just a color Mac instead of a black and white Mac. System seven, five, something or other. And my favorite, Mac platinum mode. This is a very convincing Mac Platinum Desktop. This rug really ties the room together. But yeah, how cool, how cool does this look? Using 
chromium on a classic Mac. Now there's something I bet you never thought you would see. <laughs> YouTube playing on a classic Mac Platinum interface. Now I think my absolute favorite one is Atari ST mode. <laughs> Cause I never had an Atari ST and this just looks so good. And it looks good even in this resolution. And uh, yeah, you know what? I think we need the full effect. Let's grab the Atari ST icons. Oh yeah, look at that. An Atari ST that can run Chromium. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, we have Aqua. And uh, <laughs> oh man, does this look beautiful. Look at these drop shadows, look at that wallpaper. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be scaling quite right to the resolution, but uh, if we change it to a lower resolution, the effect is quite convincing. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so that'll do it for this look at the incredible Hot Dog Linux. I absolutely love this. And uh, if you want to try it out yourself, just head on over to hotdoglinux.com and they have several live ISOs that you can download. And again, just burn right to a USB stick for a full working Slackware 15 install with uh, some beautiful retro computing interfaces. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you liked it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more retro computing-ish shenanigans like this, Please subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to B Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Briggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Ruck K Mods, John Malman, Nano, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.